Welcome everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, again, for anyone that may have missed my introduction, my name is Marissa Stark. I'm the executive director here at the Kansas City Artists Coalition, and I'm thrilled to be here with you tonight and to be talking with artist Annie Hayes. I'm going to do a quick introduction of Annie um, and her work. Annie practices practice consists of making abstract paintings. Initially, the process was important in the creation of a painting. In addition to using found materials such as discarded cardboard boxes, much of her work begins with the systemized use of pre-made material that she designated as tools in her process. The foundation of her painting is a series of steps that involves known and random acts. At a certain point, she uses what her systematic work has presented and has moved away from that to other visual considerations. Annie's drawings are based on several things, the symbols found on commercial packaging and a collection of type specimen symbols. She makes drawings that stand on their own, ones that inform her paintings and become part of them, and ones that redraw, that she redraws and resizes for laser cutting to use as tools in her paintings. Having a political or societal agenda is not something that is of primary importance to Annie. That's not her motivation. She uses um, a resilience on discarded commercial packing material that reflects her personal concerns about overuse, excessive commercialization, the people who work to make sure we have the things we feel we need each day, but it is not why she makes paintings. The painting and the decision to use abandoned material that many people have handled are distinct, but do subliminally inform one another. Her primary aspiration is to explore the internal quality of abstraction, which at this point in her life feels like the most natural and challenging things to be done. Without further ado, I hand it over to you, Annie, um, to talk more about your work and process. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Marissa. And thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I've put together a rather voluminous PowerPoint. It just seemed to grow and grow and grow um, as I worked on it. So there's lots of pictures. And I think that the introductory remarks that Marissa just, um, just gave, which I basically wrote at some point, um, pretty much could be a very good starting point rather than me launch into either a, a reiteration of that or expound on that. I think you'll see a lot in the um, images as we go through. So I am going to show you uh, the first slide. Everybody can see the PowerPoint, correct? I didn't, yeah, good, okay. First slide is um, the house where I have lived for 32 years, I guess, with my daughter and my late husband. Um, it's on Federal Hill, which is outside of a small town in Delaware County, which is in upstate New York, um, about three and a half hours from the city. And we bought the house as a weekend house, and then we decided we just really wanted to live there. It's 1832 um, on 32 acres, um, beautiful house. And my daughter took this uh, photograph last winter, I believe, and I think it's really beautiful. I just wanted to show you sort of, want to introduce what my workspaces look like in my homes. So the next slide is, let's see here. It's not, yeah, I'll do it here, there. This is the house where I spend summers and I spent all of COVID. Um, I'm imagining that a lot of people got displaced or moved or um, lived in a different home when they, um, when COVID came. But this is a house about half an hour away from the house you just saw in Jefferson, New York. Um, it too is old and has lots of outbuildings and beautiful pond. And I have several workspaces there, which I will now show you. Um, well, actually, no, this is, this is the winter place where I spend my winters now. Um, it's in Soho in New York. 
Uh, the picture on the left is our front door. As you can see, um, there's graffiti now, again. Um, I'm a little bit of mixed mind about that, but since COVID, New York has been a little rougher than usual, and um, it's gonna take us a while to adjust, I think. Um, so anyway, we have graffiti. It's a very old building, this brick building, and it's on a very small street called Jersey Street. And um, the picture on the right is Jersey Street at looking east, I guess. Um, again, you can see the graffiti is, is really right there. Um, and that this is where we spend the winter. Uh, I have two, two studios here, two workspaces. The picture on the left is, is an upstairs room that um, where I spend a lot of time. It's right, I have an, I'm in my little office and the studio is right off the office. So it's very convenient. I, if I have to do something on the computer, my computer's right here. Um, my, my, this is a small room, but it, it functions beautifully for me. I have everything I need in here. And then the picture on the right is um, when I, I did a residency at Anderson Ranch um, in 2019, the fall of 2019. And I, when I came back, I had been working pretty big on some pretty big pieces out there and I needed a bigger painting wall. So this doesn't really show how big it is, but it's quite a large um, home so painting wall in the basement of this, of this loft where we live. We have the ground floor and then the basement as well. And quite quite big. So I work on bigger pieces down there. Um, this is a piece that I actually haven't finished yet, but um, it's nice to have both spaces. This is my summer, one of my summer um, studios. So you can kind of sense that because of COVID, I've kind of become itinerant. I, you know, I just grab a place and work there depending on weather and where I am. Um, it's been rather disruptive in, in some ways. I, I, I certainly have, 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 don't have any complaints because I'm safe and healthy, but um, it, it, it's just like I'm traveling from studio to studio and it takes me about an hour to get used to where I am. So it doesn't, it's not a big deal for me. This, this particular studio is in the Jefferson house, the second house I showed you. Um, it's a, an old milking parlor because it used to be a dairy farm. And we put up a couple of walls for me to work on and some tables in there. And the pond is right off, off this room. Um, and you can see the stanchions in the back. So it's odd, but again, there's some big walls and I seem to do for some unknown reason, I seem to do I work really well down here, um, but it's just for the summer. It's not, it's not winterized or anything. Um, so those are my studios. I thought that the first thing I would do as far as my work is concerned is basically go through the paintings in the show and then go through the drawings. Um, for anybody who hasn't seen the show, now you'll see it at least in this digital virtual way. Um, this, this painting is my personal favorite painting in the show, and I was really happy to be able to have it exhibited. Um, for, I don't know what it is. Um, some paintings mean more to, to people and to the person who made it than others. I mean, I like a lot of the work I'm doing right now, but for some reason, I think the duality of this painting, um, the color, is just really true color for me. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, the painting is made of two pieces of corvette. Um, all those holes came, they were probably fruit boxes or something like that. And I flatten them out and prepare them. And um, then I use a lot of stencils, which you'll see the process later on in the talk. But um, I, I do a lot of layers. I'll, I'll paint around the stencil, a bunch of stencils. I just kind of throw them down randomly, paint around them, paint through them, pick them up, do
do some more painting, throw the stem, same stencil sometimes or different ones down and just keep layering and painting out and painting in until I feel like it's finished. And again, I don't, I don't know what it is about this painting, but there's something about it that, that maybe, maybe now that I'm thinking about it is the duality, the kind of repetition of the same form, but as if there were you know, two entities together. Um, next slide is a piece I made at the ranch, at Anderson Ranch. I did a pa painting residency there in 2019. And um, it, it too uses stencils. And as you can see, if you look in like, particularly in the big central green, that's green to me, uh, green shape, you can see places where there's been painting before before even the green was put down and then the black was a decision I made to kind of make everything distinct and um, even more colorful. So, and again, it's a, these are all flattened out boxes. There's no, no stretched canvas to be seen. Um, this is the biggest piece that I sent out to, um, to Marissa and Isabel. I, it's made of probably, I guess, maybe three or three pieces of cardboard, maybe more, I forgot. It's quite big, it's um, 61 inches wide by 40 something, I think. And it, um, I painted on, I, I tend to just paint on whatever's there and then sometimes I combine them. And sometimes they are single pieces and this one just kept growing and growing. Um, the, the black shapes that you can see, the real stark um, graphic black shapes are um, taken from some of the drawings that I will show you later that are from this type specimen book um, that um, I just wanted to see how they would be enlarged. They're quite, quite big on the painting and I like the lyrical um, shapes that kind of go around it. And uh, next one is a smaller piece. Again, a painting that then I put in some of the, sh the very kind of simple shapes that I have in my drawings from this specimen book. Um, this is two pieces of cardboard. Let's see, lost my arrow here. This is one piece of Corbett with a lot of perforations. Um, as you probably <clears throat> can tell by now, I, I, even though now I happen to be working on some um, fairly large paintings on paper and they are rectangular, um, that for some reason is not bothering me, but I, I have a real, just a kind of personal aversion to, um, stretch canvases and maybe it's the preciousness of them or the regularity of them, even though this paper work I'm doing is pretty regular, but even there the edges are, you know, they're deckled and they're, um, they're not quite as rigid as, as a, a stretch canvas would be. So I really love the fact that there's, you know, things sticking up and down at the bottom and that there are lots of holes in the piece. Um, because these holes, when I look at them, I see a, 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 a pattern that, um, that just means a lot to me. It's almost like a code or something. And it's not something I would express in words necessarily, but um, they are really important to me to have them there. And, um, and I guess I just like, I just like the fact there's a there's a design on top of a design and and um, I think it works really well for for me. Annie, um, um, we do have a question about how are the are are the pieces these court cardboard pieces are they attached and if so how and how do you actually install them in um, a space? Yeah, we should go right back to this one because Marissa, you. <laughs> You installed this, but I um, 
basically these hang from nails on the wall. They, the pieces, like if this is, say let's say it's three pieces together. They overlap, but they aren't glued together. Um, so I made some really detailed instructions for Marissa and Isabel, exactly where to put the nails. Um, this overlaps that, and um, hopefully that was, I mean, I, I don't think it could be done without the instructions, but it's really um, kind of informal in a way, um, how I present the pieces um, just hanging from, from nails that hold everything in place and keep everything lined up the way I want them to, but they are not glued together um, very often. Occasionally, if something's really floppy, I will put a piece of, I'll glue a piece of paper on the back that no one can see, but it gives it a little bit of um, solidity that nothing uh, um, rigid. I like, I actually like, like it when things kind of um, come away from the, the, the wall or kind of hang down or whatever. So again, I think it's, it's um, an informality that I do like. Does that answer the question? Is that a good, good answer? Good answer to me, but if the, the person asking would like to unmute and, and clarify anything. Well, yeah. Sure, yeah. So yeah. They said it, they, their, their question has been answered and they would like to add that it is beautiful work. Oh, well, thank you <laughs> so much. That's, that's really, really nice thing to say. So um, I think we were here. This is a piece I did, I think last, I, I've lost sense of time since COVID, but um, recently did this painting and it's a, a single piece of corrugate. You can see the, you can see up in here, I think you can see my pointer. You can see the, something's been ripped away. Um, can you really actually see the interior of the cor corrugate? Um, you can see that on one side there's, there's something and, and on the other side at the top here, there's, and there's, that's been ripped away too. Um, I think going back to what Marissa said when she introduced my work is even though it's not a political, re I, don't, I don't do it for political reasons. I, I do, I am, I am aware that other people have touched these boxes and I am aware of the hard work that has gone into in particular boxes for food and most of these things are most of these paintings are boxes that held food you know i think i think that um i'm i'm conscious and aware of people working in fields and people working on trucks and people working at whole foods and people working in farm stands and um it's not an overriding thought it's just a, it's just, I feel like I'm doing something in that process. Um, it, um, so this, this piece, this is actually a little bit odd uh, and it was a departure for me when I made it. Um, it's a little bit more, there's, there's things that are happening with the black lines that I, I, it's not that they're dimensional, but it was just a slightly different gesture that I was just, I kind of just did one day and, and decided that it was a lucky accident. So um, this is a piece that has two pieces of, uh, you know, two unfolded boxes and a lot of stenciling in the back, a lot of painting in layers and painting out in more layers. And then I painted with glue around the stencils, but didn't do anything except leave the blue lines. And for me, it's, um, it's a really interesting um, it's an interesting juxtaposition of, of, of the painting based on stencils and then just this linear grid that goes on top of it. Um, and the blue, it seems to work by being very intense and kind of coming out from the painting a bit. Um, this piece is again a flattened out box and you can see the um in this one it's particularly interesting you can see all the perforations are sort of in the central part a few around on the edges but you can't see them as well um that 
that's another code for me. And it doesn't mean anything. It's just a visual uh, point of interest. Um, I don't think about the perforations when I'm making the paintings, uh, just paint over them or they're there, or they're not there. Um, sometimes I will, will put pastel around all the openings um, just to kind of make them more prominent. Um, but most of the time I'm not really thinking about them. And this, this painting is, is weird. It, I, I kind of was giving up on it. And then I, I had all those yellow uh, lines and I decided to just outline all the yellow lines in a kind of a, um, kind of systematic decision to do that. And it's different from a lot of my other paintings. And I, um, I, think, it, I, think, it's a, it, I think it's an interesting departure from the others. Um, I mean, we do have a technical question about these these cardboard pieces. Is uh, what kind of paint are you using, I should and say, yeah. how does the cardboard soak that up, or how does it react? Does it change colors? Um, and 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 additionally, do you put any coating down to protect the pieces? Yeah, kind of yeah. yeah, that's a great question. Um, I I do put I put uh, one layer of matte medium over the entire thing, the back, the front, the, all the, every, you know, all the edges, all the edges of the perforations. And then I um, gesso over that. And um, I'm, I, it works for me, the color just, it's just as if you're working on a, a piece of paper that's been gessoed or a canvas that's been gessoed. There's no um, absorption by the cardboard uh, of the paint. The paint stays on the surface. And I use mostly use flash paint, which is um, a beautiful matte. It's called vinyl paint, um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful matte paint that really, really works for me. Um, every once in a while, I kind of shake it up and, and uh, use heavy body golden acrylics that are glossy and everything. Um, and that works too, uh, um, but I mostly work with, I mostly, mostly work with flash, pastel, and, um, and occasionally, um, sometimes casein and occasionally um, uh, non-matte acrylics. So, and there, and, you know, the, the uh, question about whether they're archival or not, I'm not particularly concerned about that. Um, Lots of people have used cardboard, um, most notably Rauschenberg, and uh, a lot of people use cardboard and, and odd, odd surfaces and substrates, and certainly a lot of folk artists do too. And I use it for a reason. Um, I, I could, and I have had some of these shapes laser cut so that I can, on, with, and, and laser cut in Luan, I could do it in metal. Um, but for me, I think the lightness of the cardboard and the um, incredible variety, pretty subtle, but pretty, um, the, the surface is varied, it's not flat. Um, and I don't have to do anything to make it varied, it, it just comes that way. So I think, um, I think with the two coatings of protection, um, I feel pretty confident that they'll be they'll be fine. Um, so is is that is that just? I think that, that's great. Yeah. It kind of as you're talking about um, this particular um, subsect of your work, could you kind of think about? Um, we have a, somebody that says, I love the relationship between something being thrown out and recycled and made beautiful in a new and different way. Um, could you, Annie, talk more about the, rec the reclamation of something that is mass produced? And yeah, just uh, mm -hmm. wherever that fits in this conversation. Yeah, um, I, I, like I said, I'm very aware of, I'm aware of, as I said, other people, other people's hands have touched these boxes. People's really hard work has gone into filling those boxes. Um, uh, 
I, I feel that there's also a, um, an aspect of this consumerism that seems to have just taken, taken us and put us in a new place as far as, you know, ordering from Amazon and all the box, everything comes every day. And it used to be, they came the very next day. And you, especially during COVID, you could get everything you needed. And we are dependent on shipping and transportation, but I am, I'm pretty concerned with um, the state of the natural world. And I think that our consumerism just plays right into that. Um, so I, I feel a real connection and I, and I, I sometimes actually feel a tiny bit guilty that <laughs> I'm making this painting and, you know, but that's what I do. And I think artists sometimes do feel a little guilty because they, it's such a privilege to be um, able to make, to even satisfy yourself as far as making an image and um, compared to working in a field and picking the, the berries that got put into that box, it, it's, it's not quite the same kind of labor, but, um, but it isn't like, like Marissa pointed out, it's not a, I don't, I don't do work because I have these political feelings. I have the political feelings and the societal feelings and the worries and concerns. And I have my painting and they're, they're not separate, but they, the concerns that I have do not, um, do not, uh, I don't know what the word is, but they don't um, cause me to make painting. I'm just making paintings and I'm well aware of, of all of it, of the, of the substrates past history. And I just feel like I'm adding to that and, you know, um, do, trying to do a good job. And um, it's, it's just a, uh, it's a complicated, I think everybody's um, relationship to why they make art is pretty complicated. And I guess mine is, is is equally that way. Um, I think that's that's a good response to that, or do they okay, want? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And I think you know people are sending me messages. So as you, um, anybody, just kind of keep sending those to me. Put them in the chat box, and I'll ask them as we, um, as Annie kind of starts moving through the rest of her. Okay, oh. good. Thank you. Um, this, I believe, might be the last slide. I haven't kept track, but uh, of the paintings. Again, it's two pieces that that I worked on sort of separately. Um, I'll I'll be in the studio and I'll be just working on quite a lot of stuff. And um, this one sort of has a pinkish um, behind level, and the one on the left has was going in a yellow direction and. I just put them together and then, then unified them by um, making, those are hand-drawn uh, shapes and uh, hand-painted. And then the very thin lines that go through those, the repeated green and black shapes are with um, oil, oil stick. Um, and these, it may, it may be, they may be attached, but, um, it's, I don't, I don't even really actually know what to say about this piece. Um, okay, now we're going to go into the drawings. Um, I think there were nine paintings and nine drawings. I know there were nine drawings. Um, and what these are, um, they're about seven inches by seven inches. So they're smallish. And they are, um, my partner, Alan, his father was a graphic designer and here in New York. And he, um, back in the old days before computers, and this was quite a long time ago, you had a great big book and you picked out the type you wanted. And you, I'm sure you must have said what you wanted to say in the ad or something. He made ads for department stores and people like that. And um, so the book, just became this source of all these little frag fragments and little shapes and um, uh, font, examples of fonts. And 
it, it's huge. It's a, it's a huge book. So during COVID, it was something that I um, did, you know, quite a lot. I did a drawing or two every day, sometimes more. I think I have, I have it written down somewhere that I can't remember where. Um, there's a lot of them. There's, I think there's maybe 160 of these drawings and they're all in moleskin books and um, they're all colored pencil. And so this is basically just shapes that I randomly found. I scan or, or take photographs or sometimes scan pages and then I isolate shapes. I do a fair amount of work on the computers to, in order to make my work. And, um, and then I paste them in to a, a bigger moleskin book and just you that's my reference book and I can go from page to page and find whatever I want to draw and then go from there. Um, the, the drawings that I sent out are more related to my paintings than some of the others and you'll see you'll see um, some drawings that kind of veer toward be more a picture of something. Um, right now in my work I'm 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 not making a lot of pictures of things. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply into working in, in abstraction. I feel very as comfortable as I can. I feel very comfortable that compared to other places I could be working, I'm very comfortable working as an abstract artist at this point. So this is another thing. These are just all kinds of little, little shapes that I put together. Um, it was a real salvation during COVID, I must say, to have a continuing daily drawing practice. Um, it was just something to look forward to, something to do when things just seemed um, a little, little over the top. I had this to, to go to every day. Um, this is a, a border. So the black part of it is a border that, um, that a designer in that era would have put something else in or had a, like an invitation or something like that. And so I drew the border, but then I filled the border in and it kind of always reminded me this particular one of the cardboard pieces because the, the edges are so irregular. Um, and I like it for that reason. And there's two, here are two. Um, if you do as many as I've done, and I think this series is probably over, but um, it's a wonderful way to just explore color. And um, I love color pencils and I love the way you can just build color like the one on the left. You know, the orange is very bright, but the background is just a lot of different colors uh, combined. And the one on the right is, you know, fuzzy. I mean, I just, it was a wonderful way for me to just experiment, which I think is what drawing is for me. I don't make drawings and then go make a painting. Obviously, I, I, I don't do that. Um, so drawings sort of stand by themselves, but they definitely inform my all my work. Um, and these are just um, pretty geometric shapes that I found. Again, um, this book has a whole section of type like um a printing printing press equipment and tools and furniture so some of these ones on the um on the right are kind of extrapolations of furniture that um people could buy if they were setting up a print shop and i just saw them differently um and then these again are geometric this the one on the right is a cabinet that you would keep uh, probably shelves or trays, I guess, of, of type. And I turned it upside down. Um, that's something I do a lot is turn things upside down so they don't look quite as recognizable and then draw them. Um, when I'm painting the top and, you know, the top is determined pretty much at the end and just if it feels right, then I designate something as the top. But and these are some of the pieces, some of the little pieces, photographs I took with my phone um, 
from that type specimen book. So you can see that some of them are very geometric, like the, the one at the bottom, this one here is a lot like, I mean, I must have gotten a lot from a previous one of the drawings I showed you from this particular little sample. And then there's there's very realistic um, spatulas. And I'm, I'm one of those people that um, I did a, I, most of my work or all of it was um, very representational for a long time. And um, so I still like to draw things. And I, you know, every once in a while I'll just draw a spatula or something just because I think it gives me a lot of pleasure. But um, it, and it, I think it's perfectly fine if you're an abstract artist to, you know, draw something that looks real every once in a while. It's just, it's all it's all work, and here's the actual book, so you can see that these are borders, all different kinds of borders, and as I said, it's it's probably about three and a half inches thick, so there's tons of material in there for me. Um, this is a page I just took a shot of my website, and so there these are just a few of the drawings, but you can see that again, you know, some look a little bit more recognizable than others. Um, here, the one that I'm pointing at, that's some kind of tool. Um, it, it just varied and um, I, I, I think it was, I think it was a good thing for me to be doing during lockdown. Before I did the type specimen series, I did um, a series, smaller drawings, these are like three and a half wide by five and a half high. It's a moleskin book. And I think I filled about six of them or something. I think there's close to 300 drawings. And so that was a couple of years before the specimen drawings. Um, these are all little shots that I, like I would look at the box, a box that was sitting there, or I would look at a box that I brought home and I would see symbols. And most of the time I didn't even know what they were. I mean, I know recycling, but I don't, I, I, you know, I'm not quite sure what these things mean, but it didn't really matter. Um, again, they were just uh, resources for me to be able to make some drawings. And um, again, some of them are more realistic and some of them are just not at all. Um, and they were really easy to carry around. Uh, I would do them in a car did in Scotland, I, you know, it, very, very portable. Um, and so this is another shot from my website that shows some of the drawings. And um, for a long, I sort of started out making them mostly red and black, but then basically something changed and I, I started to use different colors, but for a couple of the books are mostly red and black. Now, um, I wanted to show you this because you can see that this is one of the paintings that we looked at already before that's in the show. The top on the left, the top is a drawing from the box drawings. I call them the box drawings. When I was at Anderson, I could work in what's called the Fab Lab. And so I made, um, with Adobe Illustrator, I made linear um, tracings of some of my drawings and then combined them all on a sheet. And with a laser cutter, I was able to cut out um, stencils or little pieces of like cardboard, uh, Luan. Uh, the, bottom, the bottom image is, a, is the same thing cut out in Luan. So I was able to do it in wood. And I can use those for stencils, or I can also use them to paint, just to paint them themselves. Um, but it was quite a, it was a wonderful thing to be able to use that technology and um, just have, have, it just opened up a lot of things. It gave me a lot of stencils. It gave me um, a way to, I worked on some monoprints when I was at the ranch and just uh, put these different elements that I had laser cut out on them. And I'm still using them on. They're, they've become very, very important to me. So you can see that this shape is this shape, and it's up here as well. Um, so I just wanted to I thought that might be interesting to look at sort of the process. And 
I wanted to show you these because this on the left is this, it's my favorite stencil. And it's, um, it's probably about 18 inches high. And I went to Whole Foods one day and at the flower department, they had this actual piece, but they had flowers that were like daisies sticking out of the holes, which I thought was really crazy. And then I realized what a great stencil it would be as well. So I, I bought it and I've never seen another one like it, which is, so this, this is a very precious thing to me, but, um, and in that favorite painting of mine, that's the shape that, that formed those two shapes that are uh, pretty much alike. And then on the right, these are, these are um, stencils that I cut at the ranch. And I, as you can see, I use them all the time. I just paint through them. Um, they, I think they really help my work a lot. Now we're going into another series that I, I kind of work on when, um, when I feel like it, I guess. Um, they're called Flattened. And I've been working on these longer than the paintings, longer than the drawings for a long, long time. And basically I take um, relatively small boxes that contain like medicine or toothpaste or like the little things that you carry beer in, you know, those things that flatten up. And I, um, I glue them together, I paint them, I prepare them, I glue them together, I paint them sometimes separately, sometimes at the same time. Um, and so they're small, they're, this is I think nine by eight inches. It's, they're very small, they're more intimate than my paintings maybe. Um, and I've done a lot of them. Um, this is one that is a lot of things flattened out and glued together. So it's probably, it could be an inch thick. It's not very big. It's probably, I don't know, five inches across and six high or something like that. And um, there's just something about, and then I have stenciled those blue shapes. I used um, a, a stencil that I made from a paper bag um, to put that shape on there. And I like these because they're small, they're, they, they're different from the bigger pieces. They're, 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 they have a dimension to them sometimes that I really like. Um, I like the, I, I guess I like the idea of not throwing any of that stuff away. So we have boxes everywhere of, of little flattened up um, containers. Um, that I eventually use. So there's a couple more. This is a uh, this is this uh, red and blue shape is uh, I don't even know what I guess a carrier for four bottles of beer, small bottles of beer that flattens out and looks like that as a perforation, and then the the um, kind of the orange and blue shape on the right is probably from some kind of toothpaste or medicine or something like that, or some little small thing. Again, it's all consumer, consumer stuff um, that is being used in a different way. This one is, um, these are the backs of small frames, picture frames, and uh, toward the top, the, the, there's one that's cardboard, but um, the others, uh, our velvet, which was really fun and uh, to paint on. And uh, you can see the big black shape toward at the bottom of the piece. That's a folded shopping bag, the kind with the paper handle, um, which is something I used quite a lot. And I, I particularly like seeing the hardware. I just um, really like that a lot. I like, I like I like surfaces to be broken up by um, things that I don't necessarily attach um, or make and put on, but um, that are just there. And this is an example of that. Now, these are the new, these are new pieces that I wanted to show you. Um, they are paintings on paper. The paper's been gessoed a couple times, actually. Um, 
I have the sizes. They're they're pretty big. They're like, let's see. I will have to put my glasses on to read this. Um, this one's thirty inches high by forty four, and then you can see it, it's two sheets of paper, um, and it basically uh, flash. These striped elements are from a stencil that was um, in a previous slide. Um, the bigger black outline shapes are mostly uh, some stencils I made out at the ranch um, and just I just paint around them. So this is flash, just flash on paper. Um, this is the same kind of thing. Um, it's 30 by 44. And um, no, just flash, I think, in that. This one is 30 by 42, so it's just one single sheet of leaves and uh, BFK. And it's um, the, some of it, like the outlines of the two closest shapes are um, pastel. And there's some pastel in the blue lines in the back. And I, I was thinking the other day that uh, something that I don't really articulate very much, but that I think is really important to me is space, where things are in space. And um, I think that's a lot of what I'm reacting to when I'm making a, a, a painting is where are these things? Are they back? Is, there's something back there, what's beyond them, um, and what's really close. And these, these paintings on paper, um, I am excited about like this blue, uh, pink shape, which was created by moving a stencil across the, the sheet, but then outlining the shape that, that those dots made. Um, I feel like that is is something new for me that um, I'm really trying to bring um, something closer and still have um, that whole space space thing that I that I've been working on for a while now um, behind it. Um, this is uh, 30 by 22, so it's a single sheet. Um, sometimes I work and I'll, I'll make three of these all together and then one of them seems to work out well. And again, there's, there's something, so a fair amount of things close up. Um, and um, the black toward the bottom, there are some really strong black elements that have been um, outlined with that crazy brown striped line in each case. And um, they, they are operating for me like the perforations operate in the, in the paintings. Um, they're black instead of white, but they're, they're a code for me in something that holds that space um, closer to me, if that makes any sense. Um, this one is 42 by 30. Um, and it is pastel and flash. Um, pretty much like, like the paintings. Um, for some reason, I, like I said, I'm comfortable these days making these and not really worrying. Uh, maybe I'm, I don't know. There's nothing that's bothering me about the edges. So, um, that's probably a good thing. And these are really new pieces that I've just been working on. Um, when I framed the drawings for the show, I was, I, I was lucky enough that the backs had to be taken out. And so I instantly took them home and prepared them with medium and gesso. And um, so you can see that there's hardware right here. There's little, those little things that you, um, kind of move to keep the backing in. So there, again, there's something more than just a rectangle, I mean, a square. Um, these two pieces are, they're 14 high and 
combined, and, and this is one piece at obviously 28 inches wide. Um, there's a bit of glitter and um, it's, you know, I, I just was, I, I love, if anybody has any backs of frames, you can send them to me, I'll pay the shipping. Um, this is another piece that I'm not even sure it's done, but it's again, some frame backs. Um, I did a series of backs of frames a few years ago and I really um, liked it a lot. So uh, I'm doing it again. Again, same thing. Um, this has, it's mostly flash. It's, um, I think there's some resist in this, in this piece where I would, in order to keep the black, I would put some resist on there in order to um, break up the color. Um, I used resist, but I don't know that, I don't think there's any, this is, this is another kind of a variation on the last one. So this is, this is one, and then this is, I worked on all of them at the same time. And I decided that those two previous two work together well, and these, these two work together as well. Um, they're kind of messier and more jumbly than, than some of my earlier pieces, but, um, um, I'm liking it. I'm liking exploring this slightly new thing. Um, we went to North Truro for a week in September, Alan and I, and I, I, I mean, I always collect stuff on the beach, but um, this time I, I, I consciously knew that I was picking up stones that I would be drawing. Um, and I haven't done that for a very, very long time, but I did, did it previous like a gazillion years ago, quite a lot. But um, this, is, this is our dining table at this little house we rent. Um, so you can see the, the pencils, all the pencils and the weird tablecloth <laughs> and one of the drawings. Um, and then these drawings are about five inches by five inches. So they're, again, they're in a moleskin. And what I'm trying to do here pretty consciously is flatten out the rocks and the stones so that they are not dimensional. Um, and I think that it is a precursor to something I'm gonna be doing in painting at some point fairly soon. Um, so I'm studiously trying not to make these drawings um, have volume. Um, I just want a flat thing with pattern and in this case, I, I wanted a color around it to set it off and to kind of extend all that color out into um, the rest of the page. This one, um, pretty flat. So that's my goal is to make them as flat as possible. And, um, this one, I, again, Alan mentioned that when he saw this one, this was the first one I made this, this fall, that it, it kind of didn't really, you know, what is that, a shell, a rock? You know, you don't really know what it is. So I am trying to find that ambiguity in these objects that I do find very beautiful. Um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to just introduce you if you haven't ever heard of this wonderful artist named Anna Lupas. She's from Romania. Um, and when I went to London, I um, walked into a room in the Tate Modern and saw this piece and just have never forgotten it. I find it unbelievably meaningful. Um, very briefly, what she did was she went to a village and she had some, um, the women, who were expert at making wreaths out of straw, make, make wreaths, make shapes, work with her and use their skills and, and her need for certain shapes. And so they made these things out of straw. And then, and some of them are quite large. I mean, they're, they're pretty big. Um, and then they started to disintegrate, which actually, that's probably my connection with her is this discarded thing that can fall apart and, get ripped and stuff, but they started to fall apart, these straw 
pieces. And she got the men who were good at uh, working in tin to cover them. So inside all of these beautiful tin shapes, um, so handmade are, you know, basically probably dust at this point, but they, they, it's like preservation of a shape. It's like saving something. Um, the back wall is just photographs of her in the village. Um, and I, I mean, I find this just extraordinary. And um, I, I guess I like the balance that she has, she's been able to make um, bec because it isn't overtly political, but it is political if you wanna use that term, but it's also just an exquisitely beautiful um, assemblage of, of handmade shapes. And I, I just think she's fantastic. And it, the piece is called Solemn Process. Um, and it, she's amazing. Um, and here's my thing. Oh, yeah. Penny, there are a couple of questions that okay. are coming up about, um, and you touched on this briefly, but I just want to ask it in case you want to think about it a little bit more or address it more directly. Um, do you feel like your work has changed during the pandemic? And if so, how? <laughs> well, um, I, I, I think that's a really, really, really good question. Um, cause it goes without saying that the pandemic has changed everyone. Um, I think that I, I know that I, um, I, I don't think that my work changed necessarily, but I think that my um, dependence on my work became even stronger. And I, and I was incredibly grateful that I had my work in order to do um, in order to get through the, the pandemic and, and to arrive at this place where it's not over yet, but um, hopefully moving in the right direction. I don't think it radically changed. Um, I think I, I was just even more grateful to, to have, a, um, I guess you call it a diversion in a way. I mean, something that I could lose myself in um, gratefully, because um, I have a fairly dystopian view of the world and, and being in a pandemic doesn't really help that. Um, it actually makes it harder. Um, so I don't think it really changed. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think that maybe I should say that I am fairly unconscious um, when I'm working, I'm not unconscious like lying on the ground, but I, I'm not aware, I'm not thinking all the time. Um, I'm, I'm basically a really process oriented. I, I like the process of painting. I like, um, I like just jumping in and not really thinking about where I'm going. I like starting right away. Um, and um, so I, I, I think that, um, I think my work, you know, probably helped me, um, probably uh, helped me get through it for sure. Yeah. 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 I think many artists, yeah, their work yeah. Helps, helps them and has helped them and continues to help them. <laughs> yeah. This. yeah. Um, and then another question kind of related to your process and work there is do you think you work differently based on where you are working. Um, like how somebody writes differently with a different pen. And again, I think you've kind of touched on that as we as you've talked, but if you want to talk about that more internationally. Uh -huh. um, well, like I said, I have kind of, a, I have studios strewn around and um, I, um, well, the, the, the beginning of the pandemic, we were up in the 
country house and it's cold upstate New York and you know you don't go outside all the time and sometimes it's icy and I think that I got um, pretty obsessed particularly with the drawings um, and um, uh, I don't know. Can you ask that again, Marissa? Because I kind of went blind. For sure. Um, just kind of, do you think you work differently in each of those um, spaces? Kind of like here you're talking about, you stirred the rocks and the uh -huh. it, yeah. Do you work differently? Yeah. Um, the drawing just goes on anywhere I am because it's so portable. And um, I have a whole little system of packing everything up and putting it in a bag and it goes with me everywhere, basically. Um, I think that, I think that, you know, some of the workspaces I have really lend themselves to working bigger, um, but, um, I, I, I pretty much, I have drawing that I do in a table and I have painting that I do in, in a painting studio and, I would say basically, I pretty much do the same thing in all the spaces. I adapt a little bit, um, but you know, if the wall is pretty big, then I work bigger. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's just the size of the space and the uh, the temperature outside. You know, but I think that's about it. I think it's I'm pretty consistent. Yeah. So, and this is another artist I dearly love, um, um, El Anatsui from Nigeria, who I, you probably all have seen his work. It's all over, thank goodness. Um, it's bottle caps that have been wired together. Um, he has a team that works with him and they are very, um, beautiful, but they also can just fold over something. They can fold over, say, a, a wall or a chair, or a, as in the one on the right, it can, they can just wander. Um, and I, you know, I obviously relate because these are bottle caps that they've found. And um, I, I just love the way he, his color is just extraordinary. Um, and the edges, I mean, everything about it is, um, I feel very close to. And I just, if you don't know his work, you know, I just felt I should recognize him as being a real, real um, influence on me. I mean, I remember the first time I saw one of his pieces, I just, is just breathtaking. Um, here's an Elizabeth Murray and uh, I think that, there's, you know, I think women artists in particular are just so indebted to her. And I think that um, she, she led the way in so, many, in so many ways. And I like the fact that besides her color and her ability to paint and her ideas, but I also like the fact that she does, you know, she, she, she her paintings can be somewhat referential, you can see a teacup somewhere, you can see this or that, or you can kind of make up what you think you're seeing. Or sometimes they're just um, like here, the, the two major shapes, the green and the yellow and the blue and the brown are just shapes to me. And um, I'm, I, I'm just constantly in awe of her and, and really indebted to her because she, she did a lot of things first and um, I, I've never met her and never did, was able to meet her, but she apparently was an incredibly generous and nice person. And so that's even, even better. Um, recently went to the Gustin show here in New York and just took one picture. I said, I'm only gonna take one picture. And I took this one because of the door and the jumble and the color. Um, it's an extraordinary show. Um, good to see the um, KKK imagery, it, which is in a different room um, because of the controversy of people being 
so horrified that we might offend somebody, but um, Augustine's intention was not to glorify the KKK. So anytime you can see any real Augustine's, it's, it's always a, a really good thing to do. And this is a Bryce Martin. Um, I just totally love his work and um, the just the, the completely non-objective aspect and, and the depth um, of, of his painting. And he's just churning it out. Just very consistent and, and just, uh, just so unbelievably consistent. And by being consistent, he's gone to a place that is a very good place for a painter to go. This is a Rauschenberg. There was there were a couple of Rauschenberg show shows the last few weeks, and I owe a lot to Rauschenberg too. I mean, I think everybody does. He took so many risks and played with so many things, and um, I love the cut up quality and the pipe coming down. Um, kind of connects me to my previous work. I was an engraver for a long time, so um, pipes and patterns and lattice and things like that are um, kind of engraver territory. Um, and this is me looking at a Ron Gorchoff painting. Um, very beautiful. There's a very complicated way he had of creating the canvases that uh, were not flat at all. They had con, you know, they were both concave and convex. I, I can't even imagine. I figured that out, but, um, and then usually one or two very simple shapes that I find them fascinating. That's me trying to figure out what I'm looking at right there, so. And then this is just a list of artists that I like. Um, I, you know, I, I like, um, I like all these artists and I like a lot of other artists and um, I love Philida, Barlow, her sculpture is just amazing. Um, I think I spelled on it Sui's name wrong, but anyway. And I also have, I'm almost at the end here, and I also have a, uh, a, a real connection to folk art and um, naive art, have for a long time. Um, I'm, into, I'm into primitive, primitive work um, and uh, flat work and uh, craft. Um, so that's why I have that kind of artist on this list. And I just thought I'd end with my favorite painting, um, which maybe makes a little bit more sense now that I've gone through the process. Thank you so, so much, Annie. This yeah. is brilliant. I just wanted to uh, relay to you that there's a lot of um, fanfare in the chats to me tonight, just talking about appreciation um, for sharing your work and your process. Um, people are very inspired um, by both of those things. Um, one artist has just started painting on cardboard delivery boxes and discarded paper bags uh, for many of the same reasons that you've referenced tonight. Um, and they're very excited to be able to follow your journey. And oh. in their words, you are amazing. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. And I, I look forward to seeing that person's work for sure. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I would like to just, we're a little bit over time, but I still want to yeah. give people time to ask questions. If there's one or two folks that want to unmute yourselves yeah. and just make a comment or ask a question, please um, feel free to do so, um, we, uh, I mean, I think we have a few minutes. Um, Gary Nolan, yes, uh, local Kansas City fa fan favorite, says thank you, Amy, going to see the shows tomorrow, Grace, graceful and joyous. Well, let me say something about Gary Nolan, um, who is, a, a, I mean, I know Kansas City is filled with unbelievably wonderful artists, tons, I, I mean, everything I see and hear about Kansas City, it's such a great place for artists. And Gary, a few years ago, um, I sent him an email out of the blue 
And he has been responsive. He was responsive that day. He said so many really, really smart things about my work. Um, his work is just beyond extraordinary. So um, hi, Gary. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great, great, great artist and, and a good friend and very, very helpful with me, with my work. So thank you. And then just, just for anybody that might be interested in seeing Gary's work, I'm dropping his website into the chat here. So feel free to wonderful cruise through and see his work too. Uh, yeah. I would agree. He is very talented. We're very lucky to have him here in Kansas yes. City. Yes, definitely. Um, and I can see why the two of you um, enjoy one another's work. I see a lot of uh, similar and reflective um, ideologies in there so it's yeah. fun to see yeah yeah uh-huh anybody else want to just take a minute and say anything to annie or ask a quick question <laughs> looks like i think maybe some folks are typing into the chat maybe i'm gonna wait a second but um, while that's happening, oh, Daniel says we love you so much, Annie. Well, <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Good to good have family. family. Yes, it's good to have family. You. Definitely. Yes. The cheerleaders on the sidelines. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, Annie, good. I do just have um, one question that Isabel really wanted me to ask. Um, and do you do you see that in your work um abstraction as as a form of its own language or taking the place of language <clears throat> that's a really good question um it's very 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 perceptive and um i have to say that um that that one of the first things that gary mentioned to me was that he felt that i was creating my own alphabet and um, so that is very perceptive of, of Isabel. Um, uh, I, my work is not abstracting something. I mean, I guess maybe the stones or that, but, but in general, my work is, is it, I'm creating a new thing. I'm creating a new object. I'm creating a, an object that's either painted in flat or the entire thing is a new object. Um, I read a book a couple years ago. I remember read it in it. it uh, it's from the Whitechapel series. And I had read a few of the books and never understood a word I was reading. And I um, read one called Abstraction and everything made sense to me. And um, I am, I am, I'm, I think, I think there's, for me, there's a kind of a relief in not depicting something, but letting it just happen and for it to never necessarily be referring to anything, but it stands on its own and it is its own thing. Um, so yeah, that was a great, a great question of Isabel's. And I want to say also that Isabel has been amazing. I mean, ever responsive, cheerful, clear, helpful. I just, she's, she, if anybody gets a chance to work with her, just jump for it because she is she is really very very special Thank and very you. good at her job. So I'm really glad this is being recorded. Yeah, <laughs> I'll make sure that she yeah. sees this. Oh, definitely. Fortunately for our guests tonight, Isabel is our the exhibitions director here at the Artist Coalition, and she uh fell ill today and wasn't able to be here tonight but i wanted to make sure I at least got one of her really brilliant questions in yeah uh, that, yeah and i know she's really going to enjoy this um talk annie for anybody that wants to revisit this or share this with your community members we are like i said recording we should have it up on our website and our youtube channels and we'll share it with you annie so you can share it with your 
Wonderful. larger community. Oh, good. Uh, thank you. But thank you so much, Annie, for being here tonight. Thank you to everybody who joined us tonight. It has been such an honor. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Your work. Thank I you. feel like I'm going to be, I'm personally going to be going back and looking at all of your works and it just, it, I love hearing from the artists. It lends oh, a new perspective to the work. And I'm thank you. really yeah. appreciative of that. Well, the whole thing, the whole experience has just been wonderful for me. I mean, I, I, um, for various reasons, don't show my work a lot. And, and when you sent me the email, I was really, really excited. And it's been a, a wonderful process for me to, to just see, you know, at, at this point in my life, oh, you have to do this and this and this. And I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed the process. And um, I will definitely, when I feel safer about traveling, I will come to Kansas City and meet everybody in yeah. person. So make sure you, you, you come by the galleries. We oh, definitely. In real life. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I will do that. Thank you. And for anyone else on the call, if you're in Kansas City in the near future, be sure to stop by our galleries. While Annie's work might not be here, we do have work on our walls pretty regularly. Thank you again, yeah. everybody. Have Thank a great you. night.